I've not seen such bravery. Hi there, my name is Ian, and this intro is terrible. Today I'm going to talk about Freddy Fish 2, and my good friend Peanut Butter Gamer is here with me, in person even. Hey there, Austin. Hey, Ian, adventure! How was that? Freddy Fish 2 The Case of the Haunted Schoolhouse is the second of five Freddy Fish adventure games which are part of the popular, award-winning Junior Adventure series from Humongous Entertainment. It was released in 1996 for Windows 3.1, 95, and Macintosh computers and boasts feature film quality animation, a changing world, and saving. Ooh. The game once again stars Freddy Fish and her best friend Luther. I just had to find my Codfish Commando action figure for sure and tell. That's okay, Luther, but we better get going before we're late for school. All right, I guess we gotta get the two to school, which... Now hold on, Ian, we can't just rush into this adventure without clicking on some things. Let's click on this. <laughs> and this. And how about this over here? Uh... All right, I think we can move on now. Freddy, did you bring everything you need for school? Of course I did, Luther. In fact, I'm ready for a great day. And I hope you are too. Uh-oh, I sense a song coming on. I've had my breakfast. I've got my books. Come up in. Ian, how come we don't ever sing together like that? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. You hook me up with a fish that can play a harp that sounds like steel drums, and we'll see. Heading off to school, our day's begun. But probably not. Freddy and Luther make their way to school, but it soon becomes very apparent that something is wrong. Where are all the- ah, It's a ghost! No, Austin, that's the teacher. It's not a ghost. I saw the ghost, Mrs. Croker. It stupefied me with fear, and then it stole my toy! Boom! Ah, it's a ghost! Yeah, okay, that is a ghost. I feel like he should maybe work on how he says boo, though. It's not very convincing. Hey, that's my toy! Boo! That couldn't have been real. Luther and I will find that so-called ghost and get back all the toys. So a horrible ghost with a terrifying shriek Boo! is tormenting children and stealing toys? Do you know what this means, Ian? Yeah, I do. A, a day, day off of school! school. Miss Croker isn't going to be winning any Teacher of the Year awards from this decision, but she's given Freddy and Luther permission to go hunt down the toy-stealing, sheet-wearing stranger, which is probably something that you shouldn't let children do. Hey, before we go, we should click on some stuff. Let's click this. Let's click this over here. How about this over here? Algebra, history, and PE. With the ghost around school canopy. Wow, they already wrote a song about this situation? Not only that, but there's like five verses. A ghost in school is a great big lie. A ghost in school will make us cry. Just send the kids home. If the school was on fire, would they just be hanging out and writing songs about it? I think an underwater building on fire would just raise more questions. Now come on, less complaining, more clicking. Austin, I get that all this clicking is fun, but it isn't really helpful, okay? You just never know when a pair of plastic coated safety scissors will come in handy. Oh. Well, I guess that was kind of helpful. Freddy and Luther chase after the ghost, who continues to be downright terrifying. Oh! You better look out. I'll be back to get that toy. You know, it would be kind of lame to die and come back as a ghost that just wanted to steal toys. Personally, I would come back as a ghost that clicks on things, clicks on this, clicks on that, clicks on everything. Knowing me, I'd come back as a ghost that just sits around and complains about other ghosts. Boo! Wow, are you kidding me? Is that the best this guy can do? Freddy and Luther aren't fooled, though, and realize that it's not really a ghost. Something you think that the adult in this situation might have realized, but that's fine. I guess. Instead of calling someone to remove the fake spirit from the school, the pair come up with an elaborate trap, and if my last video is of any indication, this should end in the ghost getting cut to pieces or blown up with a nuke. 
This is a list of all the things we need to build our trap. And so we begin the hunt for these five items, stopping occasionally to pick up exciting things like books. Hey, it's a book about untying knots. Ah, yes, a childhood favorite. I fondly recall when my grandpappy would sit us by the fire and read from books about untying knots. Hey, look! We found the purple sea urchin. Yeah, of course purple sea urchins are back. We definitely have to keep an eye out for these. And would you looky here, it's something we need for our trap. We could use this cork to build our trap. Whoa! Don't let the bubbles escape! Uh, what? Why can't we take the cork? Because, man, the bubbles will escape. So? There's a guy in a sheet running around chasing children for their toys and we're worried about some bubbles? Yeah, man, they're gonna escape! Okay, fine, yeah, I guess I understand that in a kind of not understanding it at all type of way. The diving helmet is found atop this incredibly creepy scarecrow. Seriously, this thing is scarier than the actual ghost. Oh! It's loose! Now, you may be wondering where we're storing all of these items. A book, our plans, a sea urchin, and a diving helmet? Where does it all go? Well, that's a very good question. Next, we come across a sunken submarine, which looks pretty cool, and there's also a mysterious fish waiting outside that we can talk to. An iceberg to the Titanic's hull did rip, a sure fire bay to spoil a good trip. Hey nanny nanny and a hot cha cha. Hey nanny nanny and a hot cha cha. Oh man, it's always fun to sing about when a bunch of people died, am I right? Inside the submarine, there's a can of oil, which of course belongs in the ocean, but it's the rope above Captain Schnitzel that I'm interested in. He says we're allowed to have the rope if we can untie the knot, and thanks to the book we found earlier, untying it is a breeze. The game continues on like this as we hunt down the remaining items for our overly elaborate trap. There are also some mini games to play, like Crab Invaders, as well as some other distractions like a movie theater. The movie theater is crazy! There are so many different shorts to watch, it's clear that there was a lot of time put into the little details in this game. There's even a trailer for a Spy Fox movie! It really is impressive. My favorite is definitely the Worm Doodles commercial. You gotta have them! Mmm, mmm, Worm Doodles! Squishy, squashy Worm Doodles! In all your favorite flavors! Original, chocolate, sea cucumber, lemon, orange, Red and new fat free. Grab them. Cause you gotta have them. Oh my god, dude, I gotta have them. It really gives off a sort of Homestar Runner esque vibe. I love it. There are also the songs. Lots of songs. Like, I don't remember the first game having this many songs. It seems like every character that doesn't have an item to give us has a song to sing instead. Make that songs to sing. They have a lot of singing to do. The back of the box even mentions this, bragging about its sing-along soundtrack in multiple places, and I feel like they've earned that. Because, I mean, it's humongous entertainment for crying out loud. Uh-oh, here it comes. The level of detail in these games are just great. Look at these backgrounds, dude, look at them. All this detail for a kid's game? You don't even spend a lot of time in some of these areas, and they're so freaking pretty. And the music is so catchy, the characters so charming. I mean, even the bumbling, scratchy voiced Luther. I feel like I didn't appreciate him enough in the last game. He's awesome. Hey Luther, how about giving me a hand? I really appreciate the great job you're doing. Dude, that's me. That's my spirit fish. Hand drawn animation, guys. Look at how freaking cute these dancing fish are. It's like playing through a full fledged cartoon about a fish and a ghost and a book about untying knots. Oh, sorry about that. I just, you know how I feel about these junior adventure games, man. We all do, Ian. We all do. The trident is being held in place by a slide puzzle, which you can either solve, which is, you know, effort, or just line the empty space above the trident so it has room to be removed. Yay! To get the pulley, we visit the Pulley Emporium, which might as well be called the eventual bankruptcy emporium, because how does a pulley store stay open for more than five minutes? Barnacle Bob has a total of one pulleys for sale, and it only costs five purple sea urchins. Four of them are laying around in random places, and the fifth is way up here and too high to reach. And how do you think we get that one, Ian? Well, it's like my mom mom always told me. The best way to get something from a high place is to get a high-powered slingshot as a reward.
reward for assisting a nerdy fish who lost his glasses down a hole and can't get in there to get them himself because he can't see anything. Thanks for that advice, Mom. That gives us enough purple sea urchins to buy the pulley and keep Bob's store financially stable for another hour or so. With one item left to go, we get a little cutscene to give a bit more insight into the motivations of this ghost. <laughs> Yes, Gwen Father, we know you never had a toy in your whole life, but... But we can't get you any until the kids are out of the classroom. Okay, well, you live in a world where money is literally just scattered all over the place. I feel like it would be way easier to go find some purple sea urchins and buy a toy, but maybe that's just me. Finally, to get the cork, we have to free a turtle from a pipe by using that handy-dandy ocean-polluting oil we found earlier. Then we swap out the cork with the pipe so we don't let the bubbles escape, which I still don't understand, I'll be honest. Are you keeping them prisoner in there? Prisoner bubbles? And so, now that we have all five items located, we can assemble the trap using Luther's toy as bait. <laughs> hey, boss! Look! A toy! Let's grab it! Now, Luther! <laughs> Hey! It's Freddy Fish! And Luther! Again, I don't know why I feel like I'm only just now appreciating Luther, but this dude is hilarious. And hey, look who we managed to rescue from the toy thieves. What's up, fatty bear? You should know that you can't just take things that belong to someone else. Okay, you can give back the toys. The squid father doesn't need the toys as much as the coffee. So the squid father is like a billion years old. What is he doing stealing toys from children? If there's one thing that I'm not so keen on about this game, it's the motivation of the ghost. It does end up being a message about not stealing, as well as sharing when Luther gives up his toy to the sharks anyway. But the idea of this lumpy old dude sending people to chase around children for their toys, it's a little uncomfortable at least. Come on, Luther. Let's take these toys back to the guppies. Look what- ah, It's a ghost! No, Austin, it's the useless teacher again. She's been sitting here doing absolutely nothing this entire time. She wasn't even trying to comfort or cheer up the children. She was just sitting there looking depressed. We solved the mystery, Mrs. Croker! There wasn't really a ghost haunting the school. It was just those sharks pretending to be a ghost. I love how Freddy says that with an attitude, like, Yeah, you idiot teacher, there wasn't a ghost! Duh! You saved the school! Well, we saved a few toys at least. I don't know about the whole school. But that's the end of Freddy Fish 2. And like all junior adventures, replayability is high. Play the game again and Freddy will be hunting for different items, side characters will have different roles, and although the storyline of the game is the same, it varies enough to really warrant playing again if you enjoyed it the first time. You just can't see everything there is to see in one playthrough. You guys know by now that I really love the humongous entertainment adventure games, and this one was no different. You're not going to be challenged by it unless you're in the target age group, but it's still a fun time to play through even if you're older, and they're really high quality. I hope you guys had fun with this video, and hey Austin, thanks so much for hanging out and looking at another Freddy Fish game with us. Not a problem, Ian. I love you! Oh, well, I love you too, man. Put her there. You gotta have a mm -hmm, worm doodle. Squishy, squashy worm doodle. Eat all your favorite flavors. Original, chocolate, sea cucumber, lemon, orange, red, and new fat-free. Grab them, cause you gotta have them.